good afternoon and welcome to this workshop on evaluating sources. Uh, my name is Lisa Garcia, I'm a librarian at Homestead Campus. All right, let's get started. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat box. Okay, so we're going to be using what is known as the ACT UP method to evaluate sources and spot fake news. The source of this is the, um, let me show you who came up with it. So her name is Dawn Stahura. She's a research services librarian at Simmons College. And she took an existing method of uh, evaluating sources and she tweaked it and she added some elements that I think are important, which is why I've chosen to use this method, um, share with you today to help you evaluate sources. All right. So let's, talk, let's take a look at the elements. So we're looking at the author of the source. It's very important to notice the author of the source. So who wrote it, right? Number two, the currency. Um, when was it written? Is it up to date? The truth, is it, is it biased? Is it accurate? Do they provide sources? Is there a list of references? Um, are there typos or spelling errors? That's a red flag, right? Um, is it unbiased? The U stands for unbiased. Is it impartial or is it trying to persuade you? What is the motivation of the author or the authors? And the last one that is particular to this method of evaluating sources is privilege. So are they biased? Are they the best source for the topic? Who is missing from the conversation? And we'll explore that further. Okay, so to begin, Consider who the author of the source is. When you pull up a website, who wrote it? So um, it's important to look at the domain, right? The .gov, .edu, .com, and know what those mean. And who is able to designate, to utilize that, sort, that domain. So .gov is a website that belongs to a government organization. And because it has to be approved, right? And it has to um, be part of a government organization is considered it more reliable um, than, for instance, a .com. A .edu is a website that belongs to an educational institution, such as a university, a college, or research institution. And those are particularly reliable because, um, you know, you have a body of, of knowledgeable individuals a, a publishing, and it's going to go under review before it gets published. So .edu um, is definitely a good one to trust. Um, and then .com, you should know our websites that are commercial. They can include those that are trying to make a profit, personal websites, blogs, and more. So this is a, a, a more uh, open domain, right? And more people can, can um, get a website with a .com domain. And then the next thing, right? Act of AC is currency. When was it written? So take a look. So it's important to look at the date of publication because you want to get the most up-to-date information. Um, is it current? Is it out of date for your topic? If it's a historical website, it's different. But if it's like the sciences, um, it all depends. You have to use your judgment when it comes to the date of publication. Now, T stands for truth. So how accurate is the information? First of all, are they including references? Is there a work cited section? Are they um, citing um, articles, reports? Um, so you're looking for references and you're noticing if they provide in-text citations. So according to this, or so-and-so said this, but they're providing sources so that you can um, investigate further and see and, and take a look at those sources if you need to. Um, or to verify the claims. Also, are there grammatical mistakes? So if you notice typos or spelling errors, that's a red flag because um, that means that the editor, you know, there's is there an editor even, right? Um, and can you verify the claims that they made? If you run another search on the side, will other websites corroborate what, that, what this website is saying? Um, you know, so, 
Do other sources report similar findings? The U stands for unbiased. So what is the purpose of the information? So is it fact or is it an opinion piece? Okay. Is it trying to sell you something? Is it trying to persuade you into um, taking a particular action, into changing your mind, right? So what is the purpose of, of the information? And then P stands for privilege. So who is writing? Are they a primary source? Were they there? Like, did they witness the events? Um, if it's like a news um, segment. Um, who is missing from the conversation? So are they mindful of, of including everyone? Um, so if it's a, a report, right? You know, who were the participants, for instance? Are they biased? Do they tend to favor something or someone or a specific group over others? Um, so consider the biases, right? Um, for instance, when I first started the session, I mentioned .edu is the most uh, reliable, but of course, I'm an educator, right? I'm, I'm, I'm at MDC, so of course, I'm going to be slightly biased towards edu being much better than the rest of the domains. But of course, .gov has its own merits and so on. So consider the bias of everyone that is giving you information. So is everyone included? Um, you have to stop to evaluate sources before you trust the information that you find, right? Um, you have to have a little bit of skepticism and consider your source, consider the date, consider um, whether other sources are also reporting the same. So author, right? Who wrote the source? Who are they? Currency. When was this resource written? When was it published? Truth. How accurate is this information? Can you verify any of the claims with another source? Are there typos and spelling errors? Um, what about the bias, right? Is the information presented to sway the audience towards a particular point of view? Or maybe they're trying to sell you a product um, or it's just an opinion piece. And so in that case, you know, everything has its place, so it's fine, but consider the purpose um, of the piece. And then privilege, are, there, are they the only folks who might write or publish on this topic and who is missing from this conversation? All right, so um, I wanted to show you this study, right? It, that was published in last year. It's called, it's titled Lateral Reading on the Open Internet, right? And this is a study um, that they did in classes to the see how students um, judge what they find online. So the study um, tested an intervention aimed at improving students' ability to make a quick but accurate judgment of inter internet sources. So sort of like this workshop, right? Um, this, this workshop's aim is to help you improve your ability to accurately judge the information you find on the open, open web. Because if you're using sources from MDC, which you should be using if you're conducting research, um, let me just give you a quick review of that. So if you are tasked with conducting research, for instance, you mentioned you're a computer, computer programmer, right? And you have to find sources or information to write an essay in class, you should consider instead of using um, Google or Google Scholar or websites that are open to everyone to use the databases. So to do that, you hover over academics, you click on libraries, and then underneath the search box, there's a link to the database. You can always go to research tools and services, but I like this link under the search box. You click on databases, and as an MDC student, you have access to 117 databases. So only MDC students with an MDC account can log in and use these sources. Um, if you were at a different institution, just any institution, um, it would be the same, it's, it's the same process. So um, for instance, if you were at FIU, 
um, you're also using those databases to find information. And the package is a little different because FIU has like graduate courses at a medical school and a, and a law school. But what I'm trying to show you is that um, these are transferable skills. So once you learn how to use the databases now, you'll continue to use them in all your courses here at MDC and when you move on to university. Okay, so let's sample one. For instance, Academic Search Complete, right? Academic Search Complete is a great one to start off with because um, it provides 42 of the 117 databases. And if you click on Choose Databases, you can select all of them and run your search through them simultaneously. So um, let's say computer, since you're computer programming, I'll just select that as key terms to run a search. Um, You'll get lots of results, but they include academic journals, they include videos, they include periodicals, so regular sources, right, popular sources. But what's great is that you have um, the information, right, and you have the, the full text right away. So just for the purposes of this example, I'll click on the very first link. Um, you'll see all of the information about this source. So who are the authors? Um, what is the source? A subjects covered, the abstract. By the way, this can help you find similar articles, but right away you get lots and lots of information of who wrote it, um, what's the date, you know, reliability, and then you get your full text on the left and your citation tools on the right. So if you're using this for class, on the right you can click on cite, and depending on the format you're, you're using in class, so like, Usually if it's a science class, it'll be like APA, or if it's a, uh, a literature class, it'll be MLA. And if it's history, it might be Chicago. But this makes it so much easier, right, to organize your works cited page or your references page. If you click on full text PDF, you'll see the full text article, and then the tools will be on the right minimize. But look, you have the full text that you can download or save, and it's completely... Um, reliable it's this is an academic journal so of course um but you have all of these sources at the very end that the author has listed for you um so that you can review the references used in the in the in the um in the study so um let's say that instead you were running a search on the open web so let's say computer okay so in contrast, if you run those terms on the open web, you're going to get websites. This is a .gov one. So, you know, not bad, right? Because you got information about the, the uh, profession. Um, but then you've got, you know, um, okay, .edu, not bad. Wikipedia, okay, .edu. .com. This is a news article. But really, am I getting articles? No. So know the difference and where to go when you're looking for information and to definitely know that the that the databases exist and um, and um, and to utilize those first. OK, so coming back to the presentation. Um, so this study was looking at students ability to accurately judge um, sources on the Internet as you are always asked to do, even if you don't realize it, right? Every time you Google something. So what they found is that students are swayed by the aesthetics of the, of the website. So if it looks good, if it has the appearance of credibility, um, they, they like to see the about page, which is something you could use. But then what they notice is fact checkers, right? Who are hired to do this all the time, uh, are doing something called lateral reading, okay? And lateral reading is, um, you know, ignores the source completely, ignores the about page, ignores um, the aesthetically pleasing aspects of the website, and it does something called lateral reading, which is to open up other websites. So fact checkers leave an unfamiliar site. They leave the site, 
And then they open new tabs across the horizontal, uh, the horizontal axis of their screen to investigate the organization or individual behind the original site. So um, if they wanted to see whether um, a site was credible, so let's, uh, for instance, uh, we were looking here at uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. You would leave the site, right? Wait, this is gonna take me to the actual site. Okay, no. All right, and and then Google will tell you, all right, this is uh um belongs, is a parent agency is the United States Department of Labor. It has 2,500 employees, it's got, you know, so it, it seems very credible. Um, it was founded in 1884, things like that. So um if you or like for instance, um a different source, let me They'll take, they'll, they'll do a lot. Of, okay, hold on. Let me find another example. Hi, Nadia. Welcome. Hmm. I'm just going to put a term there. So using robotics and learning, um, let's say Iverdrola, right? What is Iverdrola? So you go, you put a lateral search and you say, okay, so this is a renewable, you see what comes up. This is a renewable energy company. You see their stock price, okay? Um, their headquarters, this, this is a, this, this company is making 53.95 billion euros last year okay um so it tells you about that organization or that company or that source and then it's up to you to realize all right it's it well established um you know and more information about that source so lateral reading um and i thought it's very interesting because we'll show you we'll use the act up method right to look at the author the credibility the the um the um date that it was published, whether or not it has um, spelling errors, all of that, right? The purpose of the piece, but the fact checkers will do the lateral reading. And I encourage you to also do that as well. So instead of first examining the site's internal features, lateral readers evaluate unfamiliar sites by leaving them and turning to the open web. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with a website, newspaper, magazine, or scholarly journal, type the name of the source or website in Google, as we just did, or Wikipedia, and learn what others have discovered about the source. Don't take it up as value, right? So it all depends on the purpose, um, on what you're trying to do with the information that you're looking up. If it's just a, a quick uh, search to, to gain information, be mindful of where you're getting that information. Um, and then if you want to look deeper, then you do a lateral search. You use the act of method um, to evaluate sources. All right. So any questions? Did you find that helpful, Yun? Yi? Thank you. Um, all right, so at this moment, if there are no more questions, I'll stop the recording. Mm -hmm.